Nice. that we used for our third album was a guy called Chris Frenchy Smith. It definitely became apparent very early on that, that Frenchy was, was the right guy for the job because you don't know until you're you're in there and you're on the spot and you're working hard and you're up against it. There's a lot of pressure in your shoulders so you don't know until until you're in the middle of it all but it was, it was very clear that we, we made the right choice and I remember thinking Within the first couple of a couple of days in Sonic Ranch, you know, we were in this beautiful studio. The creativity was flowing. Everybody was having a great time. Frenchy was doing his job very well. I remember thinking, "Nice, I can relax a bit now." Chris French Smith definitely became a, a very good friend of ours over the process of uh, doing demos and, and uh, going out to the studio in El Paso. This is what happens when. Lots of guitar players get in a room. <laughs> well, we don't really have the drums set up yet, but isn't this guitar totally cool, bro? From the point of view of being in the studio behind the desk, he was, uh, you know, he was as energetic in the workplace, if you want to call it that, as he was outside of it. All right, I'm hot, dudes. Let's rock. He was very good at that sort of interpretive dancing. As, as we like to call it. But just, but still try to play behind it. I'm still going to do some interpretive dance. Yeah, wait. Come on. In the studio, in the rehearsal room, we had lots of ideas, lots of songs. I think about 30 songs to go through with him. And he just was really, really good at getting the best parts of the best sections and energy of each song in this room and letting us know and believe in ourselves and believe in those songs a little bit more than, than what we previously had. jumping up from the desk and running into the into the, um, the, the performance studio and, and let us know what he thought of the take and always very hyperactive and, and very positive. We should, we should hear some uh, modulation or at least some flanging. Joe Walsh is somewhere right now going, I love my bastard sons. See me again, buddy. <laughs> we had done demos of the songs with Lynn Calderwood, done demos of the songs ourselves, and we kind of knew what we thought the song, what way the song should go, so we got Frenchy in to try and advise to see what he thought was missing from the songs, or really just to be a producer and you know, add his flavor. He made us believe that we actually did have a, a really, really amazing record on our hands. Let's listen. Fade out. The guy just worked us really hard. Like four or five o'clock in the morning, I was doing bass tracks sometimes. I can't even remember, it, to be honest, sometimes. And I wasn't even drinking either, so. <laughs> he just brought such a good feeling to all the songs. Like straight away, he, would st he was starting to point out things to me that I had forgot about doing and drumming. I had more fun doing this than any other album. Yeah, he's definitely left part of his uh, good energy with the band, which is, Hopefully something will work with in the future as well. <laughs>